Hey what's up everybody, Trophynet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. In today's episode we will have a look at my first proper syndicate deck I call the Spoils of Crime. You can already take a look at the deck composition right here, there are a lot of new cards in there, but fear not, we will be talking about all of them and how and when to use them. But first we need to talk about Syndicate's very own special mechanic the coin slash crown system. For the first time in Gwent we need to deal with a resource system. If you're familiar with Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering, you already know what I'm talking about. A resource system in its purest form limits how and what you can play at any given moment. You gain and spend resources over the course of the match, adding an extra layer of strategy, but also an extra aspect you need to think about. Most Syndicate cards in Gwent either give you coins or Novigradian crowns, or allow you to spend them to trigger a variety of effects. Any coins you gain are stored next to your leader, up to a maximum of 9 coins, and cannot be stolen or destroyed by your opponent. Yet, that is. If you play your cards right, you will alternate between gaining and spending coins constantly, sometimes doing both at the same time even, but more on that in a second. Any coins that are left at the end of the round are halved and rounded down when you go to the next round. So 3 coins left leaves you with 1 coin in the subsequent round. Let's dive into the cards to explain this a bit further. First our leader, Francis Bedlam, better known as the King of Beggars. He allows you to gain 2 coins 3 separate times and reduces the cost of all your tributes by 1. Tributes are optional abilities you can trigger with certain cards provided you have enough coins to spend. I like the King of Beggars over the other coin leaders, Gudrun and Horson Jr, because he gives us a bit more flexibility and control over when we need some extra coins. There's three parts to this deck, the Crime section, the Bounty section and our Engine cards. Let's start with the Crime based cards. Crime cards are a subcategory of special cards. They trigger an effect when played, usually involving gaining a few coins in the process as well. Slander for example gives you 3 profit, meaning you gain 3 coins and allows you to put a bounty on an enemy unit. More on bounty later on. Dip in the Pontard gives you the same amount, but allows you to damage an enemy unit by 3 as well. Wheel of Fortune on the other hand, damages an enemy by a random amount between 1 and 10. And finally in this deck, Congregation spawns 2 Firesworn Zealots with 2 power each, on a selected row, or 3 if you have no coins at all. You can either use these early on to get the ball rolling on your coin count, or you can hold off to benefit from our crime engines. Cut up lackeys damage a random enemy by 1 whenever you play a crime card, and increase that damage by 1 again if there is more than one lackey on the board already, because of their bonded modifier. You can play two of these immediately with Portal. Just be sure you either played your Witch Hunter already, or it is in your hand, with no cut up lackeys in there either. This will ensure you play the two lackeys in this deck, benefiting from their bond immediately. Horson Senior can transform an adjacent ally into a cut up lackey as well, setting its power to 4 in the process. With a tribute of 2 lowered by our leader, he can even transform both his adjacent units into lackeys. And you can use Congregation to quickly generate some low level units for this purpose. This possibly results in 4 lackeys on the board, dealing 2 damage each whenever you play a crime card for a total of 8 damage. Horson Senior also has Intimidate, which boosts him by 1 whenever you play a crime card. Combined with all of this, this gives you 9 points extra per crime card you saved up. To finish our crime group, we also have Sir's Cubertooth. This boar has Intimidate 2, meaning he boosts himself by 2 for each crime played. On top of that, you can also make him immune if you have 3 coins to spare, Again, lowered the tribute by our leader. Next up is the bounty section and this is where things get really interesting. When you place a bounty on a unit and that unit gets destroyed, you gain coins equal to the base power of that unit. There are however only a few cards that can place bounties. You have the slander crime card we just talked about, the witch hunter and most importantly Caleb Menge. While the first two just place one bounty when played, Menge can place a bounty in exchange for 3 coins every turn. He gives you 3 coins when you play him as well, so you get one bounty for free. Menge can allow you to set up a bounty loop, placing bounties, destroying those units and gaining enough coins to start the loop again next turn. This not only gives you a steady stream of coins, but also keeps your opponent's board clean. 
To benefit from this, we also have a few other cards as well. The Witch Hunt the Executioner gives you 2 coins and can give an enemy unit bleeding for 1 turn in exchange for 1 coin, or damage it by 1, instead if the target has bounty. Graydon can straight up destroy any unit with a bounty, and with a 4 coin tribute, he boosts himself by the base power of that unit as well, so you gain coins and points based on the target's base power in one go. I also included Morilse, another witch hunter, who can deal 4 damage or destroy any unit if you have 5 coins to spend. Again, both tributes are lowered by our leader, giving us more strategic options. Our last section are the spenders. We can generate a lot of coins with our crimes and bounties, but if we don't spend them, they go to waste. This is what makes Syndicate harder to play than the other factions. You need to find a balance, and a bit of luck with the cards you draw, between gaining coins and being able to spend them all. Arena and Draga and Horson's Freak Show have similar effects. The Arena and Draga can deal 1 damage each turn, either spending a coin or losing 1 point of health in the process using their Insanity ability. Horson's Freak Show can put bleeding on an enemy for 1 turn in exchange for a coin, but can do this as long as you have coins. When you run out of coins, you can still use him to deal 1 damage to a random enemy unit instead, but it loses 1 point of health each time you do that, because again, insanity. Tunnel Drill is an artifact destruction engine, allowing you to destroy any artifact in exchange for 3 coins. I've added this to the deck so we can at least deal with artifacts if any come up. Then we have the Borsodi brothers, who ironically complement each other perfectly. They both give you 2 coins when played, or 4 if the other brother is in the graveyard already. Horst allows you to boost any of your units by 2, for 2 coins, when he's on the ranged row, and Ewald allows you to deal 2 damage to an enemy, for the same amount if he's on the melee row. They seem to work together in Gwent a lot more than they actually do in the Witcher games, which is kinda funny. Last but not least we have some of our most powerful cards. Bincy Bloomerholt boosts herself every time you gain coins by the amount of coins you gained. Combined with bounties, this can stack up quickly. If you saved up enough coins, you can actually finish up a match with Philippa Eilhart. The new Philippa's ability is more in line with her control behind the scenes in Witcher lore. She can seize any units as long as you can spend coins equal to that unit's power. This basically doubles up any coins you spent onto points, possibly getting you 21 points in one go if you manage to seize a 9 power unit. She also doesn't lock the unit you see, so if it's a powerful engine card, it might also be a good idea to just steal a lower power unit if you can get, grab that engine. This makes her probably the best finisher in the deck. Basic gameplay is a bit tricky with this deck though, as most of the uh, Syndicate decks. You want to start off with the Tax Collector or Arena and Draga when you're going first, so you can either start gathering coins or start dealing damage. Or you can start placing bounties when you go second. Keep in mind that in any round you start playing bounties, I suggest you go all out. It's the most aggressive tactic in this deck and doesn't allow you to spread this out over the course of a match too much. Especially Graydon can become useless if you don't have any bounties left to use with him. So be careful when you start placing those bounties. I usually try to focus on bounties in one round and the crimes in combination with the cut-ups in the other round with the dry pass in the middle. Syndicate rarely benefits from short rounds, so try to keep that in check by passing the second round if you've won the first round so you still have at least 7 cards left to end it. A lot of the combos in this deck require a bit of setup, so anticipating what your opponent can eliminate at any point is also important. All this, in combination with the resource system you need to keep in check, makes Syndicate a very challenging faction to use, but also one of the more tactical, since you can store your coins to use whenever you benefit from them the most. And that's it for today, hope you enjoyed this episode on Syndicate and the spoils of crime deck. Got any other ideas on how to improve this deck? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter under at TrophyNut, so that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk and if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is greatly appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye!